Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Critzcast. We've got yet more Highlander action for you as we are getting ever closer to season 15 of ETF2L. And of course, there are some places to be decided in the Premiership Division. We've already seen the first round of the preseason qualifiers. And now some of the big guns are entering the game as we reach the semi-finals. The winner of these games here tonight will qualify for a spot in Premiership. The losers are knocked down to the lower bracket. And they will have to fight for the one remaining spot. Of course, earlier on, we've seen that some games... We saw Fela Esports knock down Tourette's Chess Club, as well as MI6 knocking down a little team into the lower bracket. And they are facing tonight two teams that were classed as the two best teams in the qualifiers and therefore got higher seeded than everyone else. In the other game, not being casted, MI6 face against Open Squad, while we will be watching Fela Esports versus Wasp. Wasp have returned after a few seasons of a hiatus, and they are back with an amalgamation of the best players in the CIS area. While Fela Esports did finish runners-up in Premiership last season, but with many changes on their roster, they are back through the qualifiers, and of course want to compete for yet another season. I'm CJ, and I'm joined by v Hooft on the camera and production with Domato as my co-caster. How are you doing, Doman? Good evening. I'm first of all really scared here because either you have a completely different voice, what everybody noticed, or I'm actually joined by someone fake nicking as CJ and now I have to pretend like <laughs> the real CJ is not actually cuffed in a corner by uh, children from the age. Now my voice... Well, <clears throat> this is infectious. Um, anyway, and not cuffed by children from the age from 8 to 30 or something. <laughs> so, this is really infectious. My voice is going to... <clears throat> I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I'm doing good, man. Um, you might have just infected me, but I'm doing good. And we're on Warm Tick. What are your um, thoughts on Warm Tick? Why I just coughed really quick. I love Warm Tick. I loved Warm Tick. It was, uh, it was first thrown in in Season 9. Because I remember that was my first season in the Premiership Division. And we came up against High Panda on it. In the regular season. And we were like, oh, we're the new kids on the block. We're coming up against the High Panda. We managed to roll them 3A. We had some really good strats on it. We had a really good forward hold. Nothing I've actually seen the team try to replicate. But to be fair, the map hasn't been played that much. Obviously, there's some high ground issues. Above, above the crates, that's where snipers like to uh, like to watch. But also, soldiers like to get that control. The sight lines are there. And there is also, of course, that area underneath. Which I think is going to be much more dangerous with uh, kind of the the over overabundance of pyro plays these days, let's put it that way, shall we? Um, but yeah, I mean, it's an interesting map. It's King of the Hill. I think it's both teams have got product. some. It was some pro I mean, every King of the Hill map is going to be compared to product, and there's always going to be similarities. But I mean, do you want to take a look? We it's got, always have actually got nine v nine. Yeah, we have nine v nine on the server. Um, um, CJ, what team comes to your mind first? Just. Oof. Oh, I mean, I'm gonna do that thing again. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit on the fence. No. And I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna say, Fela, they've lost seven out of the nine players that helped them get to the Prem final last season. Okay, they were the second best team in Europe in season 14. Yes. Seven of those players have left, and they're left with Joe and Layla and a new squad, some returning players. Whereas Wasp, I think, is this kind of like. They're trying to recreate that like super team that they tried to do back in like season 10, 11, I think it was. Um, they've actually got Morgue this time around. I'm going to have to go with Wasp on this one. I feel that Fader are definitely probably one of the other strongest teams in these qualifiers at the moment. Um, but I, I feel Wasp have got some really strong players on some really strong classes. I'm going to go over the roster. They are on different classes, but I, I'm feeling comfortable. I know who's going to be playing what. So for the Wasp roster, we have Lightclaw on Scout. Soldier will be, I believe, Dima. Obviously, he's won a premiership, what, three times now? Twice with SCCK. And once with Strong Opinions last season. And he's uh, two or three times Soldier of the Season. One of the best soldiers in Highlander. On Pyro... Is uh, gonna be DQZ? Question mark? Or is Probably. it gonna be Dima? Or I, I, mean, I don't told. know. 
No, Dito is going to be demo. I'm pretty sure. Oh, okay. Demo, uh, Deto, sorry, Dito has been playing demo for uh, Wasp in scrims at least. Demo is a, a recent addition, and I'm I'm not sure. We'll have to wait and see what actually happens there. On heavy is of course the abominable Catman. Twice heavy of the season during his time with Unpopable. Played for Wasp for a short time. He is Cat back. Is my favorite heavy runner. Talking about. Yeah, um. Demeto has some lovely stories about Catman. <laughs> Um, engineer. Now that's a good question. Maybe it's going to be uh, uh, Clark. Clark. Of course, it's got no. It's Clark on engineer. I mean, who else is it going to be? Clark, formerly of SCCK. Let's a couple of rotators. Spray. Okay. Spray. <laughs> Sprayer is on medic. Again, another very experienced player. Morg, the legend himself, is back on sniper with Imba on spy. We don't have time to go over the failure roster. We'll do it later on, Demeto. We're on to our first mid fight. Wasp are in the red. Baylor Esports in the blue. Tell me who is fighting the best during this mid fight. Well, Dito just sticked off the door, so he's basically one demo of the season just straight away. Catman is just shooting people behind the point because he's a heavy, but the, the nobody walked on pointed light. Claw is just trying to claw his way through uh, with the banana there, and no pick, first pick now going on to Mellow, I think, with Edgy to try to get a pick onto Morg, but Morg is getting protected by Lightland. So much damage on Joey early on. Catman gets headshot though, so now the picks are actually exchanging, and Dima got dispenser, so superior heals for the red team right now, and Joe is screaming at his team at 200 decibel right now, walk forward, and that's what they're doing, and they're bleeding kind of players here, it's still kind of equal, but, <laughs> okay, there we go, first drop from Layla, and there comes the Uber with the superior onto the QZ, who is on Pyro, and he gets the mini sentry, that's always good, he also scares away the e chief to l Admin, Bladis, and Joe gets killed by Catman there, so, uh, the first mid fight actually won by um, Sprayer, there is the Spice on the Sniper, and he gets the heavy as well, um, Edgy there, getting Morg and Catman, but yeah, there we go, as the cap is getting capped out, CJ. Yeah, in the end, uh, Dima there, oh, Dima with the spawn cap, I told you, this boy was good, and he gets Layla again, I mean, that shot from Morg was absolutely insane, I mean, he had one chance, and he actually hit it, so Layla down again, she's going to be respawning in a couple of seconds, that's a huge uber advantage for Sprayer, and uh, that's going to put Wasp in a really strong position, this is their map choice, just to remind you, so, uh, Wasp wanting to do well, want to sit up on the right foot and uh, you know, maybe win their home map oh, as it were. But yeah, huge so oh my and they're word. walking on this point here, they can do this, they just need to get aggressive. Spray has 10% advantage, but it doesn't matter because they don't have yet, and they're just walking towards R, they're not really capping. Now they're capping, but really good shot there onto the blue scout. Uh, from the sniper and now they actually use on the point. I don't know if this was necessary because D Todd now has to pull a lot but he doesn't and I mean it scared them away but it wasn't really necessary but yeah one minute uh, in the advantage no, of I like Wasp. This. I like this. They've got really far ah, forward. I, like this as well. I mean <sighs> Dima and Dito just go in for the huge bombs there. Dima's the one who basically does it by himself. Two rockets is all he needs to take down Layla. I was gonna say I like that Uber there. They got aggressive because they held the ground after the Uber. I mean, it was probably not the best idea, but in the end, it actually goes well for them. And Joe, they're trying to get aggressive, but Catman is on the point. He's checking nervously now. He's been backstabbed a couple of times by Mello. So he's been not in the action for a long time, but Morg, someone has to stop this man. Four kill streak for him, takes down Joe, and uh, that is a huge pick. That is really the, the focus of the damage and the calls for failure esports revolve around Joe. And without him, it's very hard for them to push forward. But they are getting some cap time here. Catman, though, is the man to try and block this, but he loses heavy battle against Bloodis. Uh, but Wasp looking really strong here, Tomato. They're just in total control at the moment, and I think someone has to shift Morg. Yeah, probably they need to put more pressure. Morg is actually alone on the left side. It always seems like it, but Edge is trying to go on him, but he just gets protected by uh, the scout there. And the next Uber comes in. Joe actually gets killed, and also Spamfest, the guy with the best voice in this game currently. And Detot actually jumps in forward. I don't know if this was necessary. They got a lot of frags here, and Detot is onto Shrine Maiden, which is obviously the weep mental X. As you can say, absolutely domed in mid -term. Maybe because he's watching anime, I don't know, but Mok is still turning up, like, so incredibly well. Layla still has, like, 70% away, she just gets completely forced back there by, by a nice jump from Dima, I think that was, and now this was actually not really going to be this effective, as only 30 seconds to go for Wasp, and they are just kind of fighting towards the point here. Yeah, they're, they're in control, there's no Ubers in play. Sprayer has the advantage, and they just know Wasp can actually give up this cap if they want to, 
and just re-push when they get the uber. Lycor's doing the best, he's just pressuring Joe out here, does so much damage, is he actually going to kill him? Nobody's helping the demo man, Lycor finally takes down Joe, nobody was helping the demo man there, uber comes in, DQZ and Demo are going to take most of it, Layla goes down to Demo, it also takes down Bloodis, huge flags, and uh, the, all the black stuff from LA Sprayer finally goes down, I'm pretty sure that's his first death of this game. I meant he's going to do the best he can, but in the end, that first round goes to Wasp. That is a whitewash, not a single second ticked off there for Baylor. Going to quickly go over their roster before we go into the second round. Uh, we have Bofa on Scout. I'm not sure who that is. I'm pretty sure that might be uh, Jinxie. He's been playing scout for them on Shrine Maiden on Soldier. That is Menti, aka Mentalex. Tea Time on Pyro. Joe, of course, on Demo. Bloodis, another ETF to admin on Heavy. Lily Mofu is Spamfest, the American engineer. We have Layla, of course, on Medic. Kaza is sniping with Mello, formerly known as Aji on Spy. Come on to this second mid fight. Layla is down very early on, Tomato. How's that going to affect yeah, Layla? Yeah, Le Leila's first pick now, that's not the perfect, she, like, she didn't have Uber, so she literally died for nothing, she should have dropped that tea time, also gets killed, and Menti just jumps in, only Imba down early in the fight for Wasp, so they can actually push this now, and they will do this, but Bloodis will be screamed at by Joe again to walk forward, but he's completely alone, he will get pressured out, it's fine, they probably claimed default 30 seconds before the game started, but they are Catman gets headshot because they have to eat with the ad admins, um, but uh, currently uh, there is a soldier on top right, um, not actually doing anything. But Dima's jumping in really deep, like he's behind them. He will make pressure. But three picks, you see, like three picks forward, and actually five players down onto Wasp, so Nike, they can push this. But big, uh, big Uber actually, like got a lot of damage. And Kaza's really weak on top right. He's probably getting spammed out there. Yeah, there we go. So kind of another good Uber there, kind of from Wasp, even. If they bled like four players, they just pushed in together too much there um, from the same angle. Fela. It's a really poor Uber, actually. Really poor Uber from Wasp. Fela is surely going to get this. Um, basically, it was Mentalex. He took down. There was a there was a massive jar of pee thrown in there by uh, by Kaza, and Menti just came in and cleaned up the players that were covered in pee. There we go. Kaza gets a headshot there. Um, and takes down Dito, so that's going to slow down Wasp for a bit. But yeah, when Sprayer ended up using it, because he got forced by a rocket from Menti, um, in the end they only had four players alive, they couldn't really do... They, they, they go good damage down, but they didn't focus frags, and they didn't get anything from it. Big problem from Menti, trying to kill people up the top here. Soldier v Soldier, Demo goes down. He's actually pressured Morg out, so Morg isn't in the fight, but the body shot does take him down. Mello is going to go for Catman again, he gets another heavy pick. Catman is going to have a nightmares about the Belgian spy tonight, and Uva comes in from Faelus. Really Spray early. Hasn't used his yet, and yeah. uh, this counter is going to be pretty strong. Yeah, we will be way better if Light Clyde actually gets aggressive fuel, but they kind of get denied there. Um, Finally, I can actually uh, disagree uh, with you, CJ. I mean, I, I would say, like, you, you said that the Uber from Layla was not that bad before when they kind of Ubered into, like, nothing or something. No, no, I said the, the Uber from Wasp. Yeah, uh, but, but before you praised the same kind of situation uh, from Layla, but, yeah. I mean, it's... Oh, Edgy there actually gets a good pick onto Detour, gets killed in the end, and now they're going to cap this out. Um, I would say it's mm, kind of a fair point, but... Um, you say it revolves around a uh, lot Joe, but interestingly enough, as Lightclaw gets headshot, I would say it doesn't really revolve around Joe in the Ubers, because I don't actually think that the Ubers are what makes or breaks uh, Fela as Kaza also goes down, so now they're actually capping this out, but yeah. Um, I would say just different approaches. I would just say that if they actually need to rely as so many... So many picks are going down, I can't actually get analytical about this, just so many frags is changing here, but a uh, really good pick there by Mello onto the... Um, onto the demos. They still have Uber, but they kind of need to watch out as there's huge jump in forcing them, CJ. Yeah, I mean, the Uber there had to get forced. Sprayer using before he even took any damage there, so um, the counter Uber comes in. Sprayer will be lucky to get away with his life there, being chased by the scout. He's only got Morg for company. Sprayer actually dodging. Could actually stay alive or just extend his spawn queue. You know, he gets out, gets to the health pack, so he's comfortable for now. And Failure, I've actually controlled this point. That cap looks like <laughs> it should belong to Wasp, but in fact, it is actually it belongs to Favor, and they have one minute left on the clock, so they're in the lead here by a decent amount of time. Big bombing from Dima, only lands a rocket onto uh, Menti, though. Like Lord doing the best he can, but Joe has one foot on the cap, and that's all you need to block it. Make sure the enemy team doesn't get it. Catman goes in for a Catman play, holding up top there. Lots of damage without taking any heals. Eventually goes down, and it's not looking great for Wasp right now. They have more players down, it is equal Ubers, and 
you know, they have the control of the point, but Vader have the better respawns, and they're just going to take this back for free, I think. Yeah, yeah, uh, the real uh, issue here is, uh, I mean, they have a pyro and a scout uber, but they kind of need to flash a lot here, so it's actually equal uber, kind of better even for Fela, but I, even though they like popped earlier, but now Joe is here, and he will, uh, okay, he g actually gets really good denied there by DQZ, who is still in below, and the real important thing here is they didn't bleed too much players, I mean, of course, Mork went down, but he's just spawning now, um, the main issue is they also didn't get a lot of players down on the side of Fela as Edge just gets killed, but there's like two picks already, like they can work with this, Kazas in Banana, if he gets called then he should be dead with Catman, walks onto the point, so they kinda need to get more damage on them quicker, only Cloud goes down, now Catman falls as well, so probably uh, like the dry exchange, not really... Um, making something work, but Imma just gets a step into Layla. This uh, forward aggression just enables the pick classes to go huge. And like big damage here on the point currently, they're probably going to cap this out. There's only three up on the side of um, Fela, but they still had Joe up, but only two up. Now the spawns come in and now they will cap this. But yeah, once Fela recaps CJ, this will be over. Yeah, it's always good. Always good in Koth to kind of force that overtime because it means Wasp have to control this point now. They cannot let. Fela cap. He, if Fela cap, they've won the round. That's it. That, uh, it's done and dusted. So big bomb in here, but no. Fela takes some damage. Uh, sorry, Layla takes some damage, but it's not enough. And Dito gets domed there by Kaza. 50 seconds in the respawn queue for him. That's not going to be good. No demo to help block this point that Uber is used onto Catman. Dima goes in for the bomb. Can he get anything done with it? He's got him far behind, but cannot find Layla. He's going to go down. And uh, this is looking really good for Fela right now. There's only four alive on the side of Wasp, they're desperately trying to get onto the point, but it doesn't look like they're going to be able to block it. 40 seconds left for Wasp, and uh, after not getting a single second off the clock in that first round, Vader have bounced back to win the second and tie it up at 1-1. Yeah, the problem with Wasp, the Wasp there was that they really didn't have any high ground control control because kind of Dima, maybe, I wasn't sure if he needed to do that jump, maybe he should have just stayed on high ground, but I mean, he, you have to commit to something as we just go again with the, uh, actually Joe this time is faster on the mid fight, um, Milk being thrown there but reflected really good, um, always kind of important, people often really underappreciate the importance of like regenerating from damage, but currently it's still, like, you see it's always that equal, now the Jarati comes in, Actually, uh, Gerati's the Pyro and the Demo Man. Mock gets killed early, which will be really important, and Light Cloud as well. So this favors right now Fela really, as they can just walk aggressive because Joe is yeah. There we go. Joe just caught through the aggression. Kaza follows up. Catman goes down, and the first mid fight will go into the favor of um, Fela. CJ, looking much better right now. I mean, they're into this game, and they they seem to have it down right. I mean, this P keeps coming in and just landing straight onto Dito's face. And it's meaning he can't get aggressive, but he did get aggressive there, took down Joe with some pipes. So uh, aggressive Uber comes in here from Fela, they're just using it on the pirate, getting damage down, forcing them to multi. Spray's Uber is actually going to be worse, despite him using it later, because he had to multi everyone to stay alive. The pirate is so dangerous these days. And uh, that pirate just pushing the back, Wasp are going to get the cap here. Um, but Fela is still in a decent position, and with all the players alive, Dima can't go for that bomb to go for Fela, so she's nice and safe. And I, I would say Fela are going to be pretty happy <laughs> with that exchange. Dima yeah. is always literally in the skybox. These bombs, I, I'm not <laughs> really, I'm still a bit critical. I don't know if he actually needs to do this because the kind of the way they're playing, like this is what I wanted to point out earlier, as it gets intense again, so I really can't explain again because they're just getting aggressive here. Flying Pyro that is now Pyro is really broken these days. And they're just getting slightly nudging the cap here. Vladis gets headshot, so whoever did that will probably get banned from ETF Drill form for one week. And now they're just exchanging all these frags currently here on the point. Um, Actually, Fela kept in that, and there are only like there are four players down on Wasp, so they can't immediately push this. Uh, Edgy gets cut out in the back line, and Tea Time go goes down to Imba. So there are picks again, like kind of opening this up. There's a sticky trap close there, to QZ, though, spots that out. Um, but yeah, I mean, Fela's, uh, Layla's, there's 80%, 70% advantage, CJ, so they kind of need to yeah, drive spray push this. Got body shot by Kaza during that fight, and uh, Layla, I mean, Dima went for one of those bombs straight away. As soon as Sprayer went down, he just instinctively jumped in, but didn't manage to catch Layla out. So yeah, 100% Uber in the bank for her, and that doesn't mean uh, Wasp have a lot to do. They actually have to break <laughs> this just hole. Jumped into the entire combo when he gets just melted away, and, and there comes the Uber. I'm sorry to interrupt, they're just the Catman. That's fine, look at Joe! Joe's jumping in on Sprayer! Sprayer touches the pipes, on oh my word. This is Ryan Maiden, aka Menti. 
he's on the top there, but he's not going to be able to go. He's got a pyro to contend with. That's probably not the class you want to face as a soldier. But there we go. One minute and 20. It's a full minute lead now for Wasp. They do have the advantage. And with this pick advantage, they should be able to cap this. Free. Melee's coming in back. No, detailed with the pipes. Nice and crisp. Takes down the spike. Spamfest is going to get cleaned up. And there we go. Fela have to back out here. The Uber is used. Yeah. For some reason. I'm not sure what happened there. But he, he yeah. was he was scared. I think Spam was actually scared of his players instead of his own life for once. And he kind of popped it there. I don't know if this was so meaningful. Blood is there. Kills Dima who was close. And tried to maybe do something on Layla again. I think Dima should stay a bit more passive. And not like his bombs haven't been this successful as he, like you might want to expect from oh, this guy. Spam actually. Woo, Spam goes down again. Body shot. That's twice in a row now. His last two deaths have been from the spot. I mean, look, there we go. Layla was down to 8 HP there. Oh, my days. Uh, but she has the Uber and actually uses it. So that's actually pretty uh, pretty good. As We've got a pause in the game now. So it gives a little bit of a little bit of time for us to catch our breaths and analyze what's been going on, Domato. But Finally. Yeah, I mean, Layla there getting forced. Not sure what caused her to go down to that low HP. But she's used the Uber. By the time that Uber's over, Spray is going to spawn. So it's going to be pretty much equal Ubers. And on King of the Hill, that's good for the team that doesn't have the point. Because, hey, you just throw bodies in and any pick you get, your player is going to respawn faster than the enemy player. So Failure really have uh, have stepped it up here. And it's something like I casted them on Monday, Demeter, okay? And they played against Chess Club. Obviously, Chess Club... Not the same team that, you know, dominated Season 7 and Season 8. You know, this all-powerful team. Um, last season, they got relegated. They finished bottom of Prem. But they have a very solid roster with some really good players. People like Kresnik, people like Kazul, people like Kunu. Players that were capable of participating in Prem. However, Fela just dismantled them. And a lot of it was because they just seemed confident in going forward when they didn't have Uber. And we saw in that first round, Wasp were very methodical. When Fela had the point, or when Fela tried to cap the point, Wasp would just use their Uber, get aggressive, and they were killing Layla. And then they would just back off, defend the point, wait until they got their Uber again. Fela would come forward, try and cap. Wasp would use their Uber, catch Layla out. In the second round, what we've seen is Layla's not dying. She's surviving. So every time Wasp tried to Uber, Layla's not dying. So then Fela just respond with an Uber. And when there's no Ubers in play, the only team that looks like they want to make something happen is Fela. Deem is going for these huge bombs, and he's not actually got much out of them in the last couple of rounds. Whereas Fela just walk together as a unit, and they're winning these DM battles much quicker. We see Deem going for a bomb, and as soon as he dies, Joe's clearly telling his team, walk forward, they're getting on the point, and they're winning these fights, just like we can see here. So, um, I think Fela just feel a little bit more comfortable, and we know how good they are on uh, Coal Plant. You know, they beat Strong Opinions on it twice last season. They seem comfortable on it. This is a, a fairly similar map in structure. They just seem more comfortable in these dry pushes. I don't know. I, what have you been seeing? Um, yeah, this kind of... Um, it, it's good that you're giving me ammunition to still tackle uh, when... When you when you said uh, that you uh, like felt that Spray's Uber was worse than than Layla's or something, um, interestingly enough, what you pointed out um, kind of doesn't contradict that point because when um, usually what okay put it bluntly and just to say it out loud like when I would play against Fela, then I wouldn't be worried about the Ubers, like the Ubers itself, like Layla maybe isn't the medic that gets the most like Ubers, you know, maybe dies a bit too much or something, like memes, 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 but anyway, um, even when they get the Ubers, I wouldn't say these actually <laughs> as we go live again, so my analy analytical uh, thought is again cut short, but yeah, like the Ubers are not this, like they don't matter this much on Layla uh, and Fela side, I would say, but um, the the thing what you said is why they are dominating so much currently is because uh, Dima Dima shopping in again and he <laughs> he gets reflected down there at tea time um, is because they actually have the Uber like on top to back it up like they're actually winning these DM fights but they also like don't like use Fela what is usually what happens to them so that's why they are dominating so much currently as Catman just gets down Kazas on his 7k right now like uh, what I wanted to say is the dry pushes work out for Fela but they also now have the Ubers to like kind of on top of that so that's why they are winning so decisively currently as Wasps still have to push in um, they kind of I don't know my heart is broken I just realized but uh, I think they are still in the kind of um, 
disadvantage you currently at all. <laughs> the air shot again, like these soldiers are just air shotting themselves out of the air, as I will retry now, and you have to take the CJ as Kaza gets another counter pick onto more. Yeah, Kaza on an 8 kill streak, he's not being dealt with. Ubers are exchanged on the points. You can hear that overtime timer going down. Fela just need to block this cap, and they win this second round. There's a lot of fighting tea time. Kaza's on an 11 kill streak. And in the end, Fela are going to take this sec sorry, this third round. And they are 2-1 up. This is Wasp's map pick, let's not forget. This is where the pause happened. Maybe uh, maybe that was a tactical pause by Wasp. Maybe they felt, what the hell is going on? This is our map pick. We were 1-0 up. We didn't even let them have a second on the point. And now they're 2-1 up. And they're one point away from, uh, from winning this map away from us. So clearly having to wake up here. And uh, Kaza there, just going on an 11 kill streak towards the end, just not being dealt with, just so much more space for him compared to Morg, who's being shut down by Joe. This mid fight, lots of P being thrown around, but not many frags. Ah, it's Freya. It's Freya, yeah. As you as said, like uh, the, the Jarati went down only on Freya this time, but he kind of took a rocket there, and I could already imagine how he raised his voice <laughs> into Mama, like, where do I take this damage from or something? And then, oh, crits, the crits, I ah, I forgot to call it out. I, I saw it when the, start, uh, the round started, but Layla actually gets crit sticky down there by Detoid and Tea Time as well. Uh, Reflects kind of not working there, and just getting caught off by that. I mean, I'm pretty sure it got um, it got called in the beginning because these spies should these spies should be experienced enough. But they kind of pushed on the point with that crits, and they were in the perfect position to take advantage of um, Fela not having Uber there, uh, as just Dima takes the top left and kind of jumps in again. I think. Uh, what I wanted to say, why why does he stay passive there? Now he creators. He should have just I don't know spent, but yeah. CJ first bit fight goes in the favor of Wasp. Wasp. Yeah, it's really interesting because, once again, it's the first time in a while we've seen Layla go down during a mid-fight, or at least during one of uh, Wasp's pushes, but the difference is Wasp are using crits now instead of Uber. Um, when they get crits ready, which is just now, they are going to use it. It's used onto Dito. He manages to take down Tea Time. Bloody also goes down, but Joe manages to pick up that demo kill. Sprayer also died. I think it was a backstab from Mello there. So, um, yeah, there we go. You're not invulnerable when you're using crits. May sound obvious, but a lot of people forget that, and he's just really the best counter to the crits. It's just to get aggressive, just walk into them, and uh, try and trade as many players as you can. 100% in the bank for Layla, and this is what we've been looking at, Tomato. What can Wasp do to break this uh, <laughs> this Uber hold? Diva just killed himself in the bank. He got piped by Joe, and then he killed himself from this rocket there. Joe jumps in onto a spray. He's in behind on the back lines, but spray. No, Joe gets actually a uh, kind of hacker shot there by Morg from somewhere, and they're actually bleeding a lot of players here. Like, they didn't get sprayer with that, but the main issue was just that they bled a lot of players doing that, so they can't actually repush this straight away. As, I mean, there's only a small difference as Dima is in here and gets nice rocket onto Layla, but really doesn't change anything, and he goes down again. Like, Usually I like Dima's plays, but it's not working here. He needs to, uh, like, it puts his team on the back foot, doesn't work. Um, Sprayer is, has his crits now, and let's see what they make work here. They use on Detoed, but this time there's no one really close should be caught right now, and they get nothing from that. Only T-Time was aggressive, and now the uh, snipe from Kaza just completely shuts this down. Joe is really lit, but yeah, kind of <laughs> all people just dying there in, in the places, and the, like, crits clearly not working out for Wasp, so that got a sting, CJ. I... I I don't understand how there's not more pressure on Kaza right now. He just seems to be allowed to just snipe for free. And he's just getting so many picks. And he's getting crucial picks like Detoed, you know, and Morg. That's that's kind of uh, denying Wasp from actually taking any ground with this. Fela have 100% in the bank. Sprayer still running that crits. This is really dangerous territory from them right now. Because if this crits doesn't work... That's a lot of time wasted, and there's only one minute left for Fela to hold on to this point as Joe takes down Morg, but it doesn't matter, Impa! Huge play from him, biggest play of him so far in this game, drops Layla, no Uber in play now, that's the opening Wasp needed, and uh, they have crits ready, are they going to be able to take this cat for free, like Claw there, with some nice meat shots, and uh, lots of players dying here, Dima controlling the top now, maybe he's been listening to you, Demato, not going for a bomb, just controlling the high ground. And it uh, looks like Wasp should be able to cap this, but they're, they're making hard work of it. Yeah, now, now they're kind of like, um, they need this high ground control here more to uh, actually win these, because I feel like Fela have the better DM at this rate. Maybe that's also kind of where they changed to crits. I'm, I'm not quite sure, like, Sprayer didn't go down that much. I mean, it's not really that he's known for it. I mean, I think he went down a lot for Sprayer standards, but I think he's equal on deaths with uh, Layla right now. The crits gets popped here. Um, 
really good sticky there over the top. Only kills Joe though, but this should maybe deny a bit, but like Detoad gets killed there as well. And Sprayer is peed on and there we go, Menti gets aggressive and everyone really gets aggressive onto Fela, so they kept this out and they actually get good damage on them. It doesn't really matter that they bled a few players there because the players that are only forward for Wasp is like really weak people, so they all die. Kaza also gets a nice uh, snipe down to spare on the back end of that, so I mean, of course you have instant respawns, but obviously these instant respawns are in your respawn and not forward, so that's why they can just safely kill the players here. And only 10 seconds to go, CJ, so they really have to make something rock right now. Yeah, and Layla is gonna have charge, she uses Uber on the point, there is nobody on the point whatsoever from Wasp, now he's going to be 3-1 to Fela, Wasp's map pick was Koth Warmtick, and uh, despite taking that first round, let's, let's not forget that first round, Wasp won it without dropping a single second, Fela could not cap the point in that first round, Wasp looked home and dry after one round only, Fela have come back, players have turned up, and... I don't know, I mean, Kaza there seems to be getting the right picks at the right time. Took down Sprayer. Basically, after that pick, it was an uphill battle. Once Layla had Uber, she was just be able to pop on the point and just deny anyone from coming in. I don't... I don't understand the... The choice to run crits in the way that they were doing. People were baiting Detoed. Detoed was going in. He was getting decent picks. He was taking down Layla a couple of times. Took down Joe a couple of times. That's the kind of stuff you need because then everyone else can just, you know, play around you and follow up on the damage. You know that when you're running crits, the enemy team is going to get in your face. Especially, it's 2018, people, wake up. The pyro is going to hold mouse one and run into you. Why is there nobody there to protect Detoed when that is happening? DQZ needs to be there. Kaman needs to be there. Even Lightclaw needs to be there. You need to have those fragging classes playing around him. And it felt every time that Wasp were going in with the crits, Detoed would fire off one, maybe two stickies, take down some good classes, but then he would just get destroyed straight away. And then Wasp weren't able to take advantage of that. And I don't know, it just seemed... It was a nice idea, but they played around it totally in the wrong way. Um, I mean, I don't know. What did you feel about the crits? I just realized where you said that. How many weeps are actually on the Fela roster? So I actually <laughs> want to switch my prediction. Um, the the crits, uh, CJ, as we go, uh, as Retooth tells us, and I actually put them up on my mobile phone again, so we can talk about these interesting numbers in a bit, um, is the crits was used to kind of counter, I think they, they realized that Sprayer, like, I'm, I'm not looking at these things, but I think Sprayer probably died mm, a bit, like, maybe same deaths as Layla, maybe even a bit, like, lower, you know, but the, the thing is, what I said is, um, he died a bit often for Sprayer standards, um, and in the end, it didn't really matter, because all these picks, like, they just had the uh, pick disadvantage at the crucial moments, I think, and that's why they used kind of crits to counter that. That's also why I said, like, Dima, I don't know, like, how many frags he actually got, didn't look at it yet, but, you know, from what I felt is, I mean, he bombed in a lot, but they needed flank forward, and it's not only his fault, but the, just the general theme of this was they were not going forward together, as you said, they baited uh, Detoured, they weren't backing out together probably i mean they all died together but like it doesn't matter really i mean of course sometimes but they did just didn't like hold a very clear line together which is really important against a aggressive team like Fela. so yeah that, that's what i wanted to say they wanted to counter it with the crits but for the crits to work you have to stop playing in this kind of scenario where you just bait your demo by not having a clear line of where you want to um play from as now cj you can uh, calculate this stuff for me yeah i mean there's some interesting stories obviously we've just looked at the game so we know how it played out but looking at the logs sometimes it's very it paints a different picture and you can kind of see some of the the hidden battles maybe on the flank that we didn't really notice the the standout one has to be kaza on 32 frags 32 kills in 21 minutes is pretty good and that's including a pause so it's more like 20 minutes um so very strong for him i felt at the start of the game he wasn't really there and morg really put his foot down on that first round and then kaza just kind of turned up and i don't know he just seemed to be uncontested he only died 12 times 12 times the only people to die less than him were you know the medics essentially 
Um, 32 for 12, 520 DPM. If your sniper's putting those kind of numbers on a cough map, pressured. it's, yeah, he it, it just wasn't pressured. You take a look at Morg. He died, okay, only five more times, but he's got nearly 200 DPM less. Um, it just seemed to me that Kaza was winning the sniper battle against him, and nobody else was pressuring him other than Morg. So unless, unless Morg got the kill onto Kaza, nobody else was going to. And if that's what you're playing as in Highlander, if you're relying on your sniper to kill the enemy sniper, you're doing it wrong. You need to have other people pressuring him. So Kaza winning the sniper battle and therefore basically had the freedom of the map. I mean, you talked about uh, Deem as bombs as well. Both soldiers doing well. Menti going 24 kills. Dima with 23. Um, basically, both getting over 450 DPM. So, I mean, both doing really, really well, actually, on this map. Which is it is a soldier friendly map. You can control those crates very well, so that's not surprising to see at all. But a big, a big, big interesting one, of course, Joe versus Detoed. Now, Joe, we all know the quality of Joe. He's played in two prem finals. He's played demo for a hell of a. I mean, did you win by the way? Yeah, I mean, twenty twenty three kills he gets <laughs> with five sixty two DPM. Detoed with just sixteen dies a few more times, just under five hundred DPM. I mean. Detoed's stats there, he, he did use the crits, but like I said, he was only getting one or two kills with it because people were killing him before he was managing to really kind of just unleash himself. And considering Joe didn't receive crits, he's getting the better stats. He's dying less. Joe, as a demo man, is somebody who launches himself in chasing during an Uber. If he doesn't kill the medic in an Uber, you can guarantee he is throwing a sticky on the floor. He would chase you to spawn to his death. That is, that is how Joe has played since season five. Which is the first time I remember watching and playing against him. Like, that's the way he plays. So if he's dying less than your demo, that means either they're totally winning the Uber fights, which wasn't the case, or your demo is just dying more than he should. And that's what's happening in the case of Wasp. Dito's dying more than he should, and really that comes down to a lack of protection. I feel Catman was playing on the high ground. He should have been playing more on the low ground like Bloodis was. Bloodis' stats look worse than Catman's at the face of it. He's got less damage, he's got less kills. But take a look at the deaths, Tomato. Take a look at the deaths. Bloodis dies 12 times. Catman dies 23. That's 23. Classical Catman. Half of those, half of those, like 10 of those deaths come to, uh, come to Kaza. And some of them there, I'm just trying to look at the number, looking at Mello. Mello picks him up four times. So 14, you know, he's dying to the, the assassin classes. Early on, spy backstab, sure. But holding on the high ground on warm tick as a heavy has been kind of debunked for a long time now. Because when you do that, you're just sitting in the sight line of the sniper. And if you're not in the sight line, you're doing nothing. So I really don't like the idea of holding up top on, on warm tick. Catman seemed to go for that. Was just getting sniped a lot. And it just meant there was just a lack of protection for Detoed. And Deme, as we know, is one of the strongest classes in the game, especially in Highlander. That was the difference. I mean, this is bad water, Demato. This is the bread and butter of most Highlander teams. If you don't know how to play bad water, then you could just turn... There we go. Um, yeah, I just want to... Uh, I mean, Catman kind of jumped down into an entire combo of four players like four times or something. And the exact uh, comes there where like word by word <clears throat> uh, I jump in I died why nobody go in with me this is exactly what he said and um, yeah there we go and that's the lack of protection onto the onto the demo man in that case but yeah as <laughs> as we are there um, CJ Badwater um, I mean I played for the kings of Badwater so if not my opinion on this map is important then I don't know um, Basically, you don't hold second anymore, and your suicide wave tells literally all there is to tell about this map because it's very interesting because you need a lot of coordination there. And I, I personally still think that there should, like every team should make a clear suicide wave, and that tells how much they got their coordination on, which is important for the rest of the points that follow up after that. But um, there we go. Um, did we? Yeah, okay, we went down both frosts. I kind of forgot that now they actually rated up three times in a row to jinx the casters. Really <laughs> bad manners. I wouldn't let either of these teams into Prem. Um, but, yeah, CJ, um, Badwater, who think, who do you think has the edge here? I, I'm not quite sure, but I think Wasp might, uh, can do more here than like getting crushed 3-1, like mm. losing three rounds in a row, then on Warm Tick. Right, first off, 
holding second. There's a different way to hold second. There was a, there was a little team called Strong Opinions. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of them. They're, uh, I, I heard of it's all good. Yeah. That, uh, kind, of, uh, kind of a big deal. Said yeah. uh, we want to hold the corner <laughs> on second. And then they did that. And Whoa, then didn't they, you see holding the corner? It's uh, it's it's different. It's you know, it's you, you hold <laughs> passive, but yeah, there wait, is wait, a second wait, hold. I, I know what the iteration is. You don't die, but you'll always get sniped from you. So <laughs> that's the iteration to the yeah. to the roof. There is a uh, there is a way to hold second. That some teams do. They put their flank up on the roof to deny the sniper. Have their combo hold kind of on the corner, but it is risky. And like you said, it's all about those suicides on first. If you can get a good suicide on first, get the uber force or the drop, and you wipe them on first. Second is basically Basically, you just might as well be non-existent because you push all the way up onto third. So it is really, I mean, especially the other day we saw this failure versus chess club. It's really going to be really important what happens on the first uh, on the first point. Aji is now tagged up as Aji as opposed to Mello. Um, we are going to see Wasp in the blue, and we see uh, failure in the red trying to defend. DQZ is on the jetpack with the pyro. He is flying in there. Oh! He gets an airplane. What the hell? Are they he is totally denied. The Uber is forced, Layla there, worried, got under 100 HP, decided to use the jetpack, being utilised, ladies and gentlemen, P Jungle Inferno was worth it. 100% um, Uber now for Sprayer, and yeah, just to say what you were talking about, the whole team, I guess, Headshot Kaza, quite aggressive. Who would you think I was going to win? I would again edge Wasp on this, I feel Catman is a very, very good heavy. And if he plays Titus to his combo, which he kind of has to on this map, it should work out for them. But the Uber comes in on the cliff. Really Tito early. is alive, so he can deny that. He finally goes down, but it's a little a little too late. Uh, there is a level 1 being built by Spamfest. And uh, it does look like Fela have control of this. So much damage down. But Kaza goes down to Morg. And Layla goes down to Morg. Morg has arrived, everybody. And he's on a 3k. That Eter that, not Eternal Award. What's it called? The, uh, the, the Teleporter Engineer wrenchy thing. Eureka um, effect, I think. That's the um, one. Spamfest is out, and uh, second is in control. Of, they got uh, first. Sorry, they got first so early by the sentry gun, um, which I was really critical about. His joy actually goes down there on the corner to mark again, and um, like they got so hard denied by the by the sentry gun, had to use so early, but. This kind of walking in allowed uh, their sniper to just get a lot of frags, which were really important. And now they're actually making pressure on third already, which is definitely the way to play this. Um, they should spam gun together from tracks really as there was a pick. Yeah, okay, Imma goes down, but Kazaga gets sniped in edgy as well. So nothing coming down from the pick class. The smoke also gets the sentry, which is really important here right now. Because this means they can just, don't worry about the sniper, they can just work their players in. Probably from boiler, I would say, yeah, it's the safe uh, way to get your soldier into top left, which is really important. Because you make space here, there's already Dima jumping in, making a lot of space, you know, and now they use a bit early maybe, but you know, Leila, they don't have anything to uh, counter with really, they don't have uh, Uber yet, and T-Time goes down, um, Mox on a 6k right now, that's just getting the point off of that, DQZ is in, kills Joe, I mean, a lot, some frags exchanging there, but um, the blue team should definitely have this, as also Spamfest there gets spammed down by the sentries, uh, by the rockets, I mean, Light Cloud dies there to edgy, but yeah, third point there, really good aggression. Yeah. Dima wins it. Dima wins Dima it. I mean, we, we talked about the, the soldiers. Layla goes down to Dima. <laughs> I was talking about Dima on third point, but on fourth point, he, uh, he manages to get the medic frag, which is huge, huge advantage for Spray now. But on that third point, they just Ubered in. They weren't contested because they got that pick onto Kaza. They were able to just Uber and focus that sentry. It went straight down. And then uh, Dima controlled that top left, he pressured out Bloodis, no heavy on the top means you have total control, able to kill that engineer, no sentry for last, and uh, there just the freedom of last then for Dima to just jump in and take down Layla, so huge advantage now, Morg is going on a mad one, he's on an 8 kill streak so far, he hasn't died since the first point, and uh, he's absolutely just kind of playing with his combo, like you have to on payload, you don't have that space, and the Uber is used up top, Dito is taking it down below, trying to take down this sentry. So much damage to Sap. Finally comes down a little bit late for him, but that does help. And uh, Mork is on a nine kill streak. What the hell? This three players that. left alive. I think Wasp have already won this. This could be even faster than the time Thaler set the other day against Just look, in comes Menti, but it's not enough. Weep down. down by the administrator. Weep down 340. That's actually faster than the 356 I saw on Monday. Failure rolled chess club. Mostly it's one of the fastest times I've ever seen. Wasp have just beaten that against the team that's at the first time. Absolutely insane. 
I just have to throw it in there. Hashtag Trader Main. Morg got a nice little kill onto Aji with his golden pan. So uh, if you caught sight of that golden statuette of a spy, that was uh, that was Morg's doing. But there we go. Insane time. What the hell happened, Demato? Come on, talk to me. Uh, on first, that was all Morg. Uh, Morg had like two frags. Then, then they rolled this to second. Then uh, that really good push from Boiler just enabled Dima to jump in. Uh, on really full health there, and before that they killed Kaza and Edgy, so no pick classes uh, denying anything, like Edgy not that important, but like the snapper down really important. Um, Leila was only on 60% there because she died in the midst uh, of that like somewhere before. So they just pushed in with full uber advantage, they got Dima into top left as you said, and they just pressured them out, then Dima just chased. And on the last push, uh, they just pushed from Boiler, which was really good uh, again, because they got a lot of card time before that, and then they had full uber advantage, so they didn't risk like dropping their medic to a, to a sniper sideline, so they just pushed with a lot of ground into a sentry gun and just killed everyone on the spawn, which was really good to see. But um, yeah, there we go. Really fast time, actually. Um, not the fastest I've seen, but definitely a fast time. Um, Morg is here currently on a very forward position. He goes out straight away, but yeah, like Leila is out instantly. They don't have um, they don't have any time for suicides, and there comes the Uber of CJ. Yeah, and it's used very early, trying to get tea time as aggressive as he can. He actually forces the flash from Wasp. They have to flash a lot of players, especially their engineer. But Imba, oh my days, takes down Kaza and Bloodis. And then using the Ambassador, hello, what year is it? Takes down Layla. So, um, no sniper, no medic. Um, I heard Ambassador does 18 damage from long distance. I think that's very viable. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, he uses it in the right way. Um, you are going to get the kills, but Morg is down. There is no sniper. Aji comes in, takes down the engineer, and saps the sentry. So there is no buildings for the defending team. Wasp have to be careful here. If they get wiped, this could spark a bit of a comeback from Failure, but they're trying to hard hold it here. We see the pressure coming in from the far side. There is a new rip advantage. Menti comes in from the bomb. Absolutely <laughs> denied by DQZ. Insane air shot reflect. Go watch anime Layla because goes. you just got dunked like in a basketball anime. Okay, quit these <laughs> jokes now. But, Layla, um, <laughs> Layla went down to Light Claw as well, Demetri. Sorry up. to interrupt. And I think Wasp are actually going to hard hold first. Yeah, th this is basically over. I wanted to say I'm a really naive boy by like thinking 30 seconds ago this is already over, but like at this time it's 100% over. As you said, they also kind of got the better exchange and now Leila is on 80% uh, disadvantage. I don't know if Spray actually uses it to show dominance or something, or he actually needed it. Oh, oh, the pipe onto Leila! <gasps> Kitty needed out of the picture! Holy, what was that, Detoad? That was crazy. I'm sorry, I just had to put a cheeky airshot emote in the chat there. That was disgusting. Oh my days. This is when this is when the morale in the Wasp team is is high. You know, they've just lost their map pick. You're playing on your enemy's map pick. It's never a good feeling to kind of have that pressure on a map that you haven't chosen. But to come out of the blocks with an insanely fast time and then still be holding, you know, two minutes down the line on first. You hit in place like that, everyone is going to be hyped, everyone's going to be in it, and Wasp are going to be the favourites for this map no matter what. Failure need to kind of get the tilt out of their mind. Out of their mind. This wrangled sentry takes down. Oh, she Layla. was peed on. Someone she pees peed on. on. Someone peed on Layla and then Clark wrangles her from afar. Um, wow. Yeah, Wasp looking good. They are losing players here, but so are Failure, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they still hold this. Um, the Uber is used again, like you said, Demetri. I think just for the hell of it, I mean, it's impossible. Oh, Kaza, though. Nice headshot onto Dima as he was in midair. So, I don't know, Fena might be able to get the uh, the first point just for the sake of it, but Wasp really are uh, showing that they're comfortable on this map, too. Yeah, like Sp Spread doesn't want to risk dying here to these noobs and ruining his stats. He just wants his team to die, really, to look way better in comparison. Lightclaw gets a kill. Why do I even call this stuff? But uh, Joel goes down, so that's probably always something to call. But yeah, 30 seconds, there's absolutely no way. Just <laughs> when he goes down again, I'm, I'm quitting this. I, I, he's giving me so much like opportunity to just slam weeps here, uh, respectively. That spray is really low. Um, CJ, what do we say? 20 seconds. Um, they're just getting cleaned up here. Tea time dies as well to Mork. So yeah, I mean, Wasp have looked way better here. I mean, I'm, I'm not completely sure if this is like utter dominance. I mean, of course, this is what happens when you get the ball like um, ball rolling. I think it's really important to see how they fare up in the in the next um, half to mm -hmm. see how they actually like play on a defense um, in kind of a defensive mode when they actually haven't like this crazy of a time to work with, you know? 
Yeah, it does. Like that mentality is different when you have to defend first. You kind of sometimes you think, oh, we can give it this point, or you try to hard hold a point a little bit longer than you should, and you end up getting rolled on the next one. I agree with what you're saying, and I think let's not forget that the first round on uh, on Warm Tick was a complete roll for Wasp as well. They didn't even let Fela cap the point once during that first round. It was a three minute to zero sweep, um, and they've rolled them here. And I think the thing about Fela is Joe will be telling his team this is what we did wrong, and they'll be trying to fix that. Wasp will be looking at this game and being and like, we absolutely pounded. <laughs> but what we're looking at, I mean, saying, guys, we pounded. Let's just do more of the same. They don't have anything to work on. Whereas Fela have a lot of things to look at and say, okay, we did this wrong. Let's make sure it doesn't happen again. So, you know, they'll be improving themselves for the second round. And it's totally within their ability to come back on this map. But I would say Wasp are in the driving seat at the moment. But yeah, it is a different kettle of fish playing on the defense first. Just taking a look at the logs, and I think it's pretty obvious reading. Morg there going 16 for 3. Only 338 DPM, not a huge amount, um, but it was only, I mean, the, the round lasted less than 10 minutes. So I, it's, uh, yeah. What I find really interesting is that Dima only has 4 picks, and like, with with that in mind, you can really trash all these numbers so hard because Dima literally won the um, the third and the fourth point for mm. Wasp, which is basically the most important, and he like basically got all of his four frags onto key picks in like kind of this area. So absolutely, I mean, you look at the this. plays he killed. He killed the medic once. He killed the NG once. Those are both at crucial times. That NG pick was on third, which just opened up the push, and the pick onto Layla, the medic, was right at the end, which enabled the Uber advantage for last killing. Uh, the demo, I mean, killing a demo at any time in the game is good. Um, the other one was on a on a soldier. So, you know, winning the DM battle on the flank. But, yeah, it does show that it's not always the amount of kills or damage you get. But if you get the right ones at the right time, um, that is huge. Sprayer, they're not dying in that game. You know, went eight assists and zero deaths. Layla, on the other hand, dying seven times. So, yeah, Sprayer well protected. Popping off those Ubers. Managed to get nine Ubers to Layla's two. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Dito there and Morg just really controlling and that's what I mean. Dito there died five times compared to Joe's nine and it just shows Joe gets the aggressive, he wants to get in into the meat of the fight and, uh, and get something done and sometimes that's not always possible um, and Dito just much well protected by Catman. Catman only dying twice just played that position near his combo, did really well, and uh, and did kind of the boring job that you need to do on, ba on, on payload sometimes. But yeah, second round now, uh, if Wasp win this we will be going to a third map. However, if Fela win this, we'll have to do a decided round on Badwater. So Wasp defending in the red. Fela Esports in the blue will be setting as fast a time as they can. And Wasp will be trying to defeat it. And Morg is very, very aggressive. <laughs> He's picking Kaza. Oh, there we go. Snapper battle into spawn. What is this? And he then he throws uh, Thrarati, uh, Jarati onto the rocks. What is this? He's still aggressive. I mean, interesting position there. I mean, I guess if he can afford it or something. Um, <laughs> Tea time, uh, Sticky Diffuse is the call you make with this, and really good jump here, like a sap on the gun, but Sprayer actually, okay, Sprayer uses, Sprayer was on 40 HP or something, like, there we go, good suicide wave from, um, Fela gives me hope, CJ, this is always what I want to see, mm. because now they are actually not against a crazy fast time, and they can, like, afford to do this methodically. Yeah, I mean, they got the Uber Force, they also took down the NG and the Sentry. And they also took down the sniper. So Morg is gonna get into the fight soon enough with the teleport. The Uber is used very early on in this far side. Detoad is gonna go down. Catman is kind of baited here by his team left alone. He's gonna be a bit of a distraction. <laughs> oh my days. Oh tea time is it's dream time for tea time. This guy is just pounding because uh, he's a German pirate, he can do that. I I'm actually I think he runs like shotgun these days. I still remember Flair Tea Time, but uh, I don't know, like played with him in Nations Tab. Tea Time is always slamming, really underrated pyro, but he just kind of DM'd into people there, you know? Um, Aji! But yeah, oh. Mork? Was it? Aji took step? down Mork on third. Mork's trying to watch and help third. And look at Joe! Oh, look at Joe! Oh, no. Dima comes in, gets distracted there. Layla looks around for Imba, hearing the ambassador, worried about getting backstabbed, but it's actually Dima who's the threat takes down Layla and what looked like Layla could actually have rolled down onto third. Menti goes in for the bomb down. That's a nice one. It's a sprayer. Oh, sprayer oh. so weak. What in Oh my god, he goes down to Vladis. That bullet from across the map. That's the one HP of damage needed. 
And Clark and Sprayer are down. No sentry, no heals. Wasp are being very passive here. The, the, the fear is, Tomato, that if they're that passive and they start bleeding players, they could get rolled onto last. Vela? Yeah. And Layla is going to have an uber advantage. Uh, interestingly enough, I, I didn't quite pay attention. I think maybe this. I don't know if the sniper actually went down for that push because now they're actually uh, being in the same. Oh, man, you really good uh, jump down to detour. Uh, but, uh, like, kills the demo is really important on this. But, you know, like, this is even faster than the push onto third in the round before. Um, and <laughs> Gaza just snipes a light cloud there from tracks, and there comes the jump again. Minty kind of gets denied there, and maybe it sets down a bit now, as the Ubers are kind of equal, so no instant push in. Spray actually has 20% advantage, but more goes down to edgy, and there's nothing really happening because this cut has got like pushed or something, but T time is really weak on tracks. Uh, they're still making pressure on tracks so much, CJ. Um, Spray still has full Uber though. Yeah, uh, actually, they're getting the backstab onto Clark. I don't see something I think so much count. Yeah, Why? I mean, there's so much room here. Bloodus is just standing on the cart and pushing. I mean, Joe went down. Um, the Uber is used by Spray. They might actually catch Layla. No, oh, no. she's going to use her Uber. She saves Menti, rushes forward to save her soldier. But in the end, it's uh, Bloodus who dies, and Layla's surely going to die here. She's, uh, she's what is it, a sheep among wolves or whatever the phrase is. Um, gets slaughtered there. And that's a pretty good cleanup from Wasp. They're going to stabilize a little bit. It's not going to be a mega fast time like we've seen before. Um, lots of P being thrown. Let's calm it down, gents. Joe is very weak. Almost gets uh, almost gets caught out, but he gets back there. Spray with the Uber advantage. So Wasp can kind of just chill out a little bit now and just kind of say, okay, let's get in position. Let's get ready for a push because Failure are doing things really kind of, like you say, methodically. They're coming in calculated. Adji came in. Backstab Clark, sap the sentry. The bomb came in from Menti as the distraction. The Uber was forced. Then the Uber exchange happened. And, you know, if they had more players alive, it would have worked. But Joe and Kata just walking forward and tea time there, getting damaged down. They're just trying to dry push this. Okay, Catman got kind of cut off there because he was staying aggressive while his team was not supporting us. But Imma just actually gets the relegation uh, frag onto Layla, which is really important here because oh, the heavy is launched into the sky. <laughs> what is this? He created us. This sentry is just so OP. I hope we got this on cam. This was absolutely crazy. I mean, it get, it's it goes down now, but the sentry gun wrangled the heavy into the skybox, which was incredible to see. And Spamfest now created us. Everyone created us because they, they play on a slope, like, you know, physics. I I mean, we, we know, uh, I will I give a shout out after that uh, to, to physics, um, but anyway, don't, no use in getting emotion here, yeah, but uh, currently still 80% advantage for uh, for Sprayer on tracks, Joe actually gets killed, so they can, like, they hold aggressive here because they have uber advantage CJ, but before that I was kind of critical because Catman died, but they definitely made up for that with the pick classes, what a surprise is Edgy kills Mork and gets a bit of room. Yeah. Morg deciding he's going to run the Razor back and play away from the combo. And that's forcing Aji to, to use his pistol, but it still does the, oh, uh, does the job. But Aji with the backstab there onto Sprayer. That is going to be a drop. Sprayer survived the bomb uh, from Menti, but it's the backstab that takes him down. So Uber advantage for Layla. She's at 95, so close. Oh no, the they're bleeding. running they're down, but the Joe wall. Bloodis all go down. Oh no! Layla, uh, Layla, sorry. Only has tea time for company. He's going to pick up Dima. And uh, maybe be able to pick up a couple of more, but Wasp are getting their respawns. DQ is on onto Layla, oh. but no, Menti is going to be doing the job to protect to spray his back up. Equilibus again, Demato, and it just seems that it's so chaotic when Fela go in, and they're just kind of edging it slowly, and, but but slowly but surely. As a newly forged medic, uh, I will. Uh, I actually know this. Like they push three percent uh, too early, but they're actually getting ground here, and they actually. I mean, they're getting kind of counterpicked, but uh, there's a quick fix from Spare. I mean, he's only a fifty percent, so it doesn't really matter currently. As blood is just a heavy on the point, just push that in. I mean, a bit under six minutes, five uh, fifty nine. Yeah, fifty nine. Interesting. Um. But uh, CJ, like the initial push didn't work out because I'm I'm pretty sure you can relate to that as well as a as a medic or something. But like three, like you have ninety seven percent and all of your team dies. I mean, kind of. Of course, you have to be aggressive and make ground. It's just kind of these unfortunate like things. But uh, I mean, they didn't get Layla after that, so they just pushed with the respawns and they actually got it because they controlled high ground with that. And then they just pulled, uh, pushed them back into the lower spawn, and Bladis was on card and just pushed it. So six minutes, 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 uh, which is a very respectable time actually, I, um, I think. 
Um, but yeah, I think actually this looks better for Fela now. Um, like on the looks of it. Yeah, I mean, they're on the defense now. They can kind of control how much time they want to give themselves on each point. If they worry too much at one point, they can just back off and think, okay, you know, we need to hold on to the next point now. We don't need to take too many risks. 5.59 is, what, two and a half minutes faster than what we just saw uh, on the previous previous round. However, that's usually what happens on payload. We do see a fast time earlier on and then slower times as the teams get more established and a little bit more used to each other's tactics. So Wasp here, they don't have all the time in the world. They don't have everything to kind of play for. DQZ is still on the back, uh, sorry, the jetpack. So going to be interesting suicide coming in from him shortly. He comes in at the same <laughs> time as Dima, but both of them get denied. And uh, they get a dispenser. That is about it. Catman also gets wrangled down. And Layla is nice and comfy there with 100% Uber. Nothing to worry about. So uh, Wasp have to rethink their suicide strat. They are getting cart time, but uh, they haven't got anything done onto the combo, which is, which is the big key. And Jinxie there taking down Morg means they aren't going to get a sniper pick anytime soon. Yeah, um, actually Spamfest teleported out. I don't know, like this gives kind of room because the sentry is completely unprotected here. Yeah, actually, Layla drops down to the low ground. Only 60 HP, but she knew that there was no damage coming in there. Step on the teleporter. I think Edgy's on spawn somewhere and he actually takes down teleporter. I uh, know Imba, that is, sorry. Uh, with a butter knife, even. Um, which is really important on this point, actually, as Mork just gets in pressured on the left there with this flank to protect him from the enemy spy. Um, but yeah, like, uh, Leila still has her Uber, so kind of two suicides didn't do the job, but the third one is going to do it. Like, Dima jumps in alone, goes up, and Edgy gets pick, uh, pick onto Mork. Um, but yeah, like, they got the force there, which is really something to work with. Yeah, they're actually coming in through the tunnel. It's a tunnel Uber. They're going to wrap around here. This usually works quite well if they get early picks. But they're not. Clark goes down. Spamfest has gone down there to the pipes of Detoed. That sentry is still alive. It's a level 3. A little bit of spam should take it down. Um, but there we go. Morg finally gets into this round. He has been pretty absent so far. He takes down Kaz and that's a big pick. And it does look like Fela are going to uh, back off here. They realize first is a, a bit of a lost cause. They can back on to second, maybe even third. With uh, a good, nearly a couple of minutes chalked off yeah, two, there. So two minutes. It's really it's good. pretty That's good smart going decision. for the first point. A smart decision by them, definitely, to pick out like two minutes. I would be really content with this because if you like hold this third point now and just get a proper setup, it's really easy to hold for four minutes. As Detot actually pipes down Menti really good. I think that was an air pipe or something. I didn't quite catch that. Um, Okay, you got apparently reflected and then and demolished afterwards or something, but they're walking in more currently from tracks. Maybe he can get an early pick, which is really important. They have a sticky trap above main, but if they actually settle here, and I think they will probably hold passive here, Leila holds passive, she doesn't want to risk anything. Um, I think they're looking in good shape here, Fela, CJ. Yeah, Adi, with the backstab on Tomorg, he's really focusing the sniper. As we know, if your, your spy is taking down the sniper over and over, it means your sniper has a lot more space and a lot more time. Doesn't have to worry about getting headshot. And we can see Bloodis is in this really good position on the top balcony. He has to back off there. Takes a lot of spam and that's the initiative that is needed from Wasp Walk Forward. They take down the sentry very early on. Very good strat coming from them. Counter Uber comes down, but there's not going to be any Uber, uh, sorry, any sentry there. But wow, Joe oh. with the sticks. Gets three players, including Sprayer. Was that the sticky trap? Demolished. No, he was just chasing with the Uber. Okay, um, because um, interestingly left like um, they could perfectly see the difference. I mean, they did this kind of push from Boiler again, which is always very important to get your soldier on top, you know, like overhealed, because he needs to do a lot here if they just hold passive on the stairs. But this time, they, I mean, they got the sentry straight away, but they still had the Uber, and they kind of could afford to pop late as Edgy just gets slayed there by DQZ, I think, in the back lines, trying to get the teleporter. Kind of un unlucky there, but, you know, like, actually, you forged Spymans know that there is no thing as luck, there's only a lack of skill, because there's no luck. Um, <laughs> but Dito here gets spammed really early, goes down, Kaze gets sniped by Morg, which might be an opening, but they lost their sniper early on, they still control the high ground here on the side of Layla. I mean, 20% advantage for Spray, they really need to make this work, and they're getting aggressive here, which is really good. I mean, Catman, he's getting spammed down, and I think it was just exchange to get the card really far, because they're not out of this yet, CJ, they still have two minutes to push this, which they can do, but will be really, really tough. Yeah, I mean, it is definitely possible. Um, once you get that cart rolling, the cart is tantalizingly close to that third point as the Uber comes in. Wasp don't want to... Wow! A, oh, a no. reflect there from tea time takes down Dito. The counter Uber comes in. This is not going to go well uh, for... Uh, actually, it's looking pretty good for Wasp. 
Lots of players dying in the background. Catman somehow takes down Bloods from the low ground. That sentry goes down as well. Catman with the Tomislav really uh, sniping his they, way they in there. They need to slay them here. Uh, he knows, yeah, Joe he knows, is trying to block the car. Joe takes down Sprayer! Joe takes down Sprayer just by spamming the car. Just as well that Imbo came in from behind and backstab later. Both medics out of the game, but Sprayer will be spawning earlier. And uh, Wasp have a bit of momentum here. They are all weak, but they're pushing this car. They have just over a minute to go to get this into last. They are going to have basically equal Ubers. So you have a choice here. They have a choice. Either wait for this Uber <laughs> and try to win the fight, or go in for the dry push. As Layla what? has a little yeah, bit of sniping sniper, right? Layla. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes snipers expect a sniper in the kill feed, but more often than not, it's the medic getting them a crossbow. So maybe Crusader's crossbow needs to get nerfed. And currently, they're just bleeding players here from tracks uh, from was. They still have like it takes 20 seconds from this point to push out like really uh, good, I would say. So they just uh, it's it's really it's really hard. They need to take this ground right now as we speak and just slay the players like really decisively and put them into spawn because I don't they, they can't wait for this long. Like they they need to be aggressive right now. They need to be forward but but they're not and it's gonna be indecisive they take tires this basically over CJ yeah it, it's it's too slow Morg does get a nice pick onto Kaza Dima goes in for a huge bomb trying to make some so he does take down Joe it's oh. actually a lot oh. of hard time um, there's only five players left alive people need to go in the car though they're not cleaning it up in oh. five seconds oh, it's so the... close there's no. one player left alive two Wait. seconds to go ah. where's he gonna go in ah. no he didn't. didn't no it didn't no it didn't go in in time that is actually a failure win. The car oh. goes in and explodes, but it was just half a second less than. <laughs> if this, this is one one. This is confirmed. Confirmed. I, I'm staring illusionized at my desktop screen right now. At my laptop. Uh, yeah, CJ, they were too slow. <laughs> this is what happens. Um, this might be one of the closest things I've seen in a very, very long time. I mean, I've I've seen I've seen that was ridiculous. I mean, I, I thought it's done. They ain't gonna do it. But then the car actually went in and exploded as the as the message came up. Um, so that is a uh, this is pretty that's pretty insane. So we're <sighs> looking down and out there, um, but in the end. They were down and out, but it did look like it for a second. For a split second, we thought they were forcing us to a third map, but no. Failure for the second map in a row have come back. It's 1-1 one, one again. If they win this next round, they win this next round of Badwater. Failure will be confirmed to be playing in the Premiership Division for Season 15 of ETF Duel Highlander. Whereas Wasp will have to go through the lower bracket despite being one of the two top seeds. Being one of the top seeds in the qualifiers basically means you just have to win one game and you're through whereas Fela have already had a, uh, a game so far they had to beat through Tourette's chess club Wasp have just been sitting and waiting so it would be considered an upset I would guess um, yeah, we're going to take would, a look at the I logs would, from that previous game, Demetri, if it means anything whatsoever. I, I would be upset as well. Like, imagine if, if you are, like, bribing ETF to admins, and then you actually, like, to get the higher seat, and then you get the higher seat, but then you play against ETF to admins, and they're like, <laughs> we take your money, and we also take your upper bracket spot. Um, <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> that's a good point. I mean, yeah, but I'm, I'm just taking a look. Again, Joe. Joe with the damage, 488 per minute. The second highest is actually Menti. Menti goes 9 for 13. Normally, Soldier, like we were saying on the first round, Dima basically won, you know, got in the right position and got the right picks. Menti, you know, showing on the logs, didn't get as many kills as Dima, but got a lot of damage. Over 400 DPM for him. So, you know, the Soldiers are doing work for sure. Kaza not as dominating, Morg not as dominating as we saw in previous rounds from either of them. But yeah, we are going to the third round on Bad Order. I mean, prediction, man. Prediction. Come on. I think. It's we've been guessing either way all the time. Who's going to win this bad water? Uh, the main issue now is I am. I actually think that they're playing proper. I like to cast proper Highlander, but I think I actually went with uh, with Fela completely unforced in this kind of scenario. So the main issue is now when my prediction wins, then the game is already over. Um, it won't go to a third map. As yeah, it won't go to a third map. So um, therefore, I think I should may no. I'm like I still have to root for this, but um, for the sake of a better game, we just hope that was, um, you know. CJ, I mean, of course we said that they were slower, but 
um, I have to I have to admit fault here, which is basically something to to bury into your brain because I will never do this again. Um, because like they they were a bit slow, but I I thought they would be like ten seconds or something slow, but they really were. I would almost say unlucky because even though this hurts like saying it uh, but this is like they collected so much good karma they need to mm. win this now because this was so close like I would say that they actually take the second round but it was you know like if you they think do the this karmic now, retribution yeah. of the universe is going to decide well, I mean they did everything perfectly there Wasp uh, sorry Morg got the big pick onto the sniper Dima got the big pick onto the demo and then everyone just flooded onto the point half a second but Dito there isn't going to get anything done just yet he gets taken down Dima with the big bomb can't get anything done, gets tonight, DQZ's a bit delayed with that jetpack, launched all the way back into spawn, there we go, just, just, this is Vayla just saying, get the hell out of here with that jetpack, go and out of my he's, sky, yeah. he's not going to though, he's still on the jetpack, so, get ready for another pyro bomb. It's very interesting year to live in, as, um, I mean, you will, I'll co look at the jumps again, I mean, DQZ is in as well, he's <laughs> He kills Layla! Oh, completely flamed down to oblivion, like she dropped on the low ground. <laughs> she needed to do this, but there's a jackpot. Like, why do I even have to cast this in this country? Why does a pyro fly? Dude, do you, do you know you know that gif with like the man, uh, he's like an old dude, and he's waving his hands and it says it's happening? Uh, that's what's going through my head right now. Like, everyone was like, a pyro jetpack, that's gonna be useful in suicides. No one's made it work, really. And then so finally, DQ's there coming in, bam! Showing that it can be done. Pyro is now a suicide class on Badwater first. Dima there with the direct hit. Nice little mini air shot onto Joe. Gets the mini crit, so it counts as an air shot. Okay. Are some frags going down onto Wasp, but they are <laughs> going to get this uh, this first point, and uh, they are going to have an uber disadvantage. Ray did have to use um, to actually claim that first point, but it's looking good for Wasp so far. They're probably going to claim second off the back of this as well. I mean, it doesn't look perfectly like they would have, like, uh, not in a rollable kind of situation. It's, it really depends now how they play as a team together. I mean, look at this. Dima's already taking top, which is really important. He actually spams down the gun really uh, fast, which is, again, very important. I mean, they can just spam it from tracks now because just getting up level 1, they have the coordination down here. They can just spam it before it gets built. Isn't happening currently, though. Um, as they're just waiting for this card to nudge there, which they can do because they still need to cover a lot of ground. Only second gets kept right now and a bit under two minutes uh, which is basically the time it taken them before to take the third point and they do the boil, uh, boiler push again CJ so last time it didn't work out um, actually Mork misses his uh, shots there I mean sorry um, the other Kaza misses his shots and gets killed so they can now make this work from the top right I was just gonna say it's been just uh. over two minutes and Mork and uh, and Joe didn't have a kill yet as I was about to think that Joe just cleans up a couple of people including Sprayer so um, you know he, he wasn't quiet for too long um, Uber advantage for Layla now. She has 100%. They have a level three in the window. They have the dispenser on stairs. They're sitting pretty comfortable. This is the uh, the classic third points, third point hold. If it wasn't for the fact that Dima's running direct hit and is causing spam fest all sorts of headaches, just taking down that sentry over and over again. Kaz is trying to snipe from that window, but um, it's not very uh, not very easy to do when that sentry keeps going down. Finally, Aji decides he's had enough of that direct hit nonsense. No more shenanigans while he uh, is getting backstabbed, but Spray just catching up with Ubers here, Tomato, and it's just about getting your sniper into a good position and maybe kind of just getting an opening pick. They, they like the Kaza in the push before, but they took so much spam. I don't, I still have to question why they dropped because they had so much room to pop there. I mean, it would have been a dreadful Uber probably, but it's still better than like having no chance because you drop. But currently, they actually made a lot of space before the Uber, which is always really important. And Kaza's down on a one second respawn. I mean, he will spawn right now, and Menti actually gets killed, which is really important. And the gun goes down as well. I mean, Dima gets killed there, but. It shouldn't matter because they just have so much forward pr pressure and they just push them into this like real room. It's actually, Layla gets a bit separated from Joe and like the Pyro did so much in that the card is really, really close and they're just currently fighting over the card. So scrappy, clock of the season goes down because you can't fight like 50 people at once and they get blood is down but it, it looks better now for the defending team as they just fought them off but the card is so close, CJ. It is so close. All it really takes is a decloak or, you know, an uber distraction, something like that. Joe is actually sticking up the cart just to make sure nobody tries to sneakily cap it. Um, so it's, but it's you can jo see that Joe is not a spy man because you don't put stickies in front of the cart, you put it behind, you can just go behind it. Um, the really important yeah. thing is tea time on the cart, but yeah, Joe, like, you up your spy gameplay really, man. What are you doing? <laughs> Imbo actually goes there, he resets the cart 
um, just by kind of de-clicking near it. Um, so it's not going to roll back just for the time being. Um, but yeah, Wasp here, getting a little bit messy now. You find that happening when the cart is so close to a point, you start to lose a little bit of concentration. Just try to kind of ham fist it through and it's not yeah. really working. They just need to get this Uber and using this Uber, they can actually make some space and maybe allow somebody to kind of get that cap going on. But it is a very passive hold from Fela. They are Me actually kind of like, in like the, uh, the household. Yeah, Dima is doing uh, Imma, sorry, Imma is doing the right thing, like what you said, now they actually do the Uber in here, so I get to the start a bit later. I mean, currently, Layla is a way better Uber because she pops way later onto Tea Time, onto Joe, really important classes as well, like really fast as well. Um, they don't get a lot of frags, but the most important thing is they don't leave players, they still have this kind of high ground and defensive, really strong defensive position. Imma is going on the card as well, he just, like, the players on that, so you can't cap it, but he can reset it. And uh, what you said though, like, you shouldn't get desperate for the card, I mean, I always say, I mean, a oh, really good um, rocket stab at Dima gets killed though. Um, I always say, like, I reset card, but the rest of you, like, actually form a proper push and don't get desperate and, like, don't always hope and pray because if you get a proper push with this, you can just, like, wipe them with that. But Imba now gets the cap really good. But, you know, if they have a proper push now, they can push them out there. 20% advantage, so let's see what they make out of this CJ. Yeah, I mean, this is where they can kind of roll it. Fela, I'm sorry, Layla is so weak. She was under 4 HP, gets cleaned up by Lightclaw. So there's not even going to be an Uber on last for Fela to actually try and defend with. And this is uh, reminiscent of that first round where Wasp Ray will just kind of roll this in. Now, it's not going to be as fast a time, but it could be a decent enough time to get them the win here. The much needed round win. They need it to stay in this tie. Otherwise, Fela win this match and we'll be going through into Prem qualifying. Uh, straight into Season 15. Big bomb in from Dima. I'm not sure why they have the Uber advantage. Uh, the Sentry goes down to Dito. They're not picking up much of Catman. Trying to get Layla. But he's going to get cleaned up. All that damage meant he takes down Sprayer. And that was a disastrous Uber from Wasp. Yeah. They got uh, the, the main issue, they like bled three players before that and like uh, the, the pyro made pressure early on Dito. I mean, he called something for like they didn't use which, which was like important there. The main issue was they used really early, they had to flush a lot of people. I mean, they got the ground there, but they just didn't have the tracks because like players died before that, which is really dreadful before an Uber, like the flank died before that. So now they have to make this work, like they have to force Layla here or just play it a bit aggressive again. Like there comes Dima, he's really peed on I think really early or something. Thing is really weak, doesn't get anything done. Detot as well goes down. Lila's just comfortable there, not really getting touched. As um, it's really hard, like, I mean, it's still probably a proper time, like, in general, but like, not considering this match, they need to be quick here. Yeah, and they have the obstacle of an Uber to deal with. Layla is at 100%. Sprayer has his Uber in a few seconds as well, but it does mean it's going to take them a little bit of time. To, uh, to actually do something and they can decide to go in and go for an exchange or try to go for a force it's been a bit difficult for them to do this on the last but Dito is actually going in there Dima as well they don't manage to touch later she's literally inside of the dispenser in the corner um, behind a sentry so very difficult to access Wasp will have to think of something different I feel maybe try to get some spam down from the old map room where Menti is holding but I don't know I mean as each second ticks by Domato, yeah. you can feel Wasp kind of losing the grip on the game. It started off really well. They kind of faltered a little bit on third. And then if they lose too much time here, this is where the morale starts to dip. I don't even know why they did this exchange. Like, they literally wasted 30 seconds there right now because two suicide waves, di waves didn't work out. And then they suicide while they had a full Uber. They should have just done, like, what they do right now 40 seconds ago. Just take the ground on tracks, which is what they're doing really good. And they're going to take the exchange. But Catman gets dropped there because he jumps down. Like, classical Catman play. He always does this, but just doesn't work. Dito gets denied a lot. Kaze goes down in the backlands to Imba. Um, but doesn't really change anything because they're just still having this uh, tracks control and this was a really like I don't want to say dreadful Uber it was just not like on point um, they're just getting cleaned here up here on tracks really yeah spray very very weak has to play extremely passive there are some frags coming down from Wasp though Morg takes down Menti and Joe goes down and they're just kind of flooding onto the car now tea time is gonna be the man to get something done spray goes down medic down Layla actually gets in on the frags taking down Imba um, so that level 3 is basically the thing that's stopping them right now. That cart is being watched by the robot. And uh, it's going to be difficult for Wasp to dislodge it as they have an uber disadvantage again. And like I said, Tomato, these fail pushes 
they're going to start thinking of different things uh, otherwise the time is going to start getting closer and closer to double digits and if we've got something like 10 minutes then the failure are just going to be feeling really really good going into the final round they need map room control what you said like it's really important Dima is going in alone I don't think he will get anything done now not actually sync the shards in the sense as well like Catman alone in again detoured as well before that like First of all, not synced up. Second of all, I mean, of course they need to do a suicide wave, but please take map room. What you said before, like you can already see because Fela's always playing around this sentry uh, really good, which you could see where, like, was actually where we kind of were surprised a bit. They got like four frags or something, but like the rest of the Fela players just played around the sentry and they didn't get like any spam from that because they only pushed from tracks. I mean, of course, opening there because Menti goes down and Kaza, so they can make this work, but maybe not if they push from the same angle again. I mean, it will be very interesting, but Catman. And like he has done the same thing. Let's see how this works out actually now, CJ. Yeah, DQZ is actually spamming with the uh, the detonator, I think, um, from map room, and he's just causing so much distraction. Joe actually goes down. Wasp have control of the high ground, um, and that's what I mean. It, it did need to be a lot of damage from map room. The Uber comes in, spray still has this. They finally use it, but they're not actually using it to achieve much. Bloodis is uh, playing so passive that. He's not going to get damaged by Catman much. The sentry should go down eventually, but they're just totally caught out there. And whilst they had such a good opportunity there, DQZ was doing a great thing. Just being in map room, being annoying, taking the eyes off of everybody else. Wasp took the high ground. They didn't take the Uber directly into them. They were basically on the spawn door trying to spawn camp yeah. while Fela were Ubering in choke and just killing the rest of their teammates. When they Uber in, they drop down near to the lower spawn. You need to get into the face of that sentry. You are not going to kill a wrangled sentry from a distance. They try to dry push you now. They're starting to feel the pressure. You can tell they do pick up tea time. He's in a 20 second Reapers one now. Dima drops down. It is a wrangled sentry. He's managed to take down Layla. And a spray goes down, but so many people are dying for failure here. I don't think it's going to matter. Only four up. This is the time for Wasp to try and get onto the cart. Morg takes down a couple of really crucial people there, including Joe. Bloodis is trying to block the cart with the fist of steel. Menti's actually oh, going to buy Menti. time! He killed his... Did, did he kill his... I don't know. I thought he killed a fellow weeb, but he didn't. Uh, but now... oh, Almost 12 minutes, CJ. Um... What you said there, they actually had this, like, spamming the sentry in this winning push from, like, different angles and such. Um, what we saw before, I liked, kind of, the idea that Wasp had a diff different approach there, because they picked off Joe, but as soon as they picked off Joe, they should have just instantly ubered in. Because, Fela, actually, I think they made a pretty good choice, actually, because, I mean, they used the uber not directly onto the combo, that, I mean, that didn't uber yet, so they just got frags again, you know, like frags on tracks, and then they jumped down, they jumped into a sentry gun, all the players were safe out on tracks, because there was no attacking team there anymore, because they all just killed them before the uber, so there were just, like, three combo members of Wasp left against the sentry gun, and then the players came in, and they could play the offensive high ground, and then they could all kill them. Um, but, yeah, like, um, trying to mix things up there by Wasp kind of didn't really do them like any good so 12 minutes if I am Fela I am fairly certain that this is in the bank and in the back and that I'm actually playing in Prem next season again yeah I mean they're gonna be thinking that if that overconfidence gets too much then could lead them to make some mistakes get a little bit too cocky and wasp could get back into this but at the same time wasp need to say mentally strong morgue they're getting the opening kill onto kaza so that's something good for them to uh, to work from but yeah they really just need to kind of stay focused and and not give away too much because this is still doable if they get some decent times onto the different points sprayer actually dodging but no he has to use the uber there uh, catman cleaning up the jumpers and uh, nobody really dying, but that Uber is out of the way, so uh, we'll see Layla coming out pretty soon, I'm sure. She's hiding in spawn at the moment, just waiting for her respawns, will be coming out. And uh, we'll have to see how it goes, but Wasp definitely under the car here, they need to... I don't know, they just need to get it right, but DQZ with the <laughs> reflect onto Menti, that's one player out of the game. And there's no spy, really early. so there's not going to be... Oh, look at that, <laughs> Joe just... Sorry, tea time, I mean, tea just time. totally removed. He's, He's just away. Mark, I don't think he's walking. He's going to come in from behind and kill Morg. Um, he's on the scout as well. 
overpowered class. They actually, um, I mean, they kind of detracted from that they re used really early. Joe is alone in, but he should get picked off there by Light Cloud. <laughs> or maybe Light Cloud jumps and then gets completely directed out of the out of the picture, but only one up, only Clock is up, and he was so. <laughs> He will show how you can get mid air headshot by a sentry gun jump. Goodbye. Holy that was hell. crazy. Highlight reel, please. I mean, I I don't even know what's going on. Um, it looked like Fela had beefed that. It looked like Wasp. Was I mean, I'm gonna... playing with this Kaza guy on land, so obviously he has to pull the place here, so I don't cut him on land. <laughs> I'm yeah, not even in charge I mean, of it. Don't listen to me. It's just. Wasp look like they were in control. They look like they've actually survived that and then they just bleed like a ton of players. Um, but Layla did die there to Imba. He's running that Ambi and he's running it to good effect. So second point does go down, but Wasp are going to be able to build up something on a third. They have no engineer kind of building in a decent position. Clark has got to pass the sentry. He's going to have to move it up now. Um, but yeah, Wasp just under 10 minutes to go to hold these last two points. These are the points where you get most of your time. Joe does Joe. go down, um, yeah. so Wasp, I don't know, this is this is edge of seats time, they need to play out of their minds to hold on to these last two points. But I find interesting, okay never mind, I was just about to say like Sprayer is really ballsy here for Sprayer standards, and actually holds aggressive, um, but he doesn't. Um, he has 50% advantage, I mean of course, I have the kind of feeling that this meta shifted like back when, when I was playing that they actually are oh, good pick they actually on to detour it from edgy is when players are playing aggressive but this time or on the, on the stairs on the left but not like so far out I mean Mok gets killed, Light Claw as well, they're getting all this ground here on tracks currently so much pressure, Clock goes down as well, this sentry is completely free to spam goes down instantly, Spray actually, I don't know why they used this early, they probably didn't have to I mean Layla is getting weak but she's like at 30 HP really really close there to going down but <laughs> in the back end of that I mean that was kind of not necessary Kaza to take down Sprayer um, but yeah I mean Dima's still behind but they're going down with the third as he actually gets the force onto Layla but three and a half minutes CJ um, and still some players down from Wasp this is very easy for Fela to just walk in yeah Kaza killed about five people in a row there didn't miss a shot <laughs> I was watching his POV took down the NG the medic the heavy didn't miss a shot, but it does get taken down by Morg there. Sentry is down. This is going to be... This is dire straits for Wasp right now. They have to absolutely... Oh, great denial there onto Menti. He's not going to be able to get Sprayer. But, oh, tea time almost does Catman. He's got that tracking still. And uh, they live to fight another day. Clark is on the respawn, but everyone else for Wasp is alive and ready. 7 minutes and 55 seconds. If they hold this for that time... They will, uh, they will take it to upward, but failure is just in control at the moment. They have so much time to play with on this last point. This is the time where Clark puts a sentry gun in the Lenny spot, and then they just push on tracks and get completely denied all the time, and then they rage. But there's a pyro in onto the medic because he's a class. I would just say he's a class. He can do that, and he takes down Sprayer. So the pyro is a very interesting pick class at this current scenario. I mean, both medics died there, but... Um, I'm not actually sure who that favors currently. I mean, they still got the picks on the um, on the offending team, but they have a sentry gun, which is a really important thing on the defending team, so they actually can hold this aggression off, even if they have like um, spawn and player disadvantage. But yeah, I mean, equal was again uh, CJ as the gun goes down, but they make pressure here from Trex because it's failure. Yeah, they're gonna keep just dry pushing in. Joe takes down spray. I mean, they're just walking in and getting frags. They are dying, and. Layla dies to the sentry. sentry. I mean, she was in, but the rest of her team wasn't. Um, They're so all dead. It's a, it's, a, it's a level one, and it's doing some work at the moment. Blood is drops down. I don't think he realizes the sentry that he wins the fight. 38 HP at the end of it. Does take down Clark for good measure, but Clark with the rescue ranger frag. Uh, only four alive here for Wasp. It's really bad for them at the moment. They have to wait for these respawns and hope they come in soon. It's going to be five seconds. Menti is in on the medic. They have high control. Spamfest is in. He's getting aggressive now. This looks almost a certainty now. Vela do win it. They take Badwater 2-1 coming from behind on both maps. 1-0 down on Warm Tick to win it 3-1. 1-0 down on Badwater and they've won it 2-1. Winning the only two maps they needed to win. Upward will not be played. Vela Esports will be playing in Prem for Season 15. The runners-up of Season 14 changing so as my voice is going just as well when I go to a third map, Demeter. Hooray! Changing seven out of their nine players.
having to go through the qualifiers again show that they can throw together a good team as well. And uh, they're going to be playing in Season 15. Wasp, however, not down to the lower bracket. They will be having to play one of the other teams. I'm not sure which one it is. It's either Lil Team or it's going to be a Chess Club. We will find out. But yeah, I mean, on paper, that's a surprise, Demeter. Wasp, obviously, the, the highest seeded team, one of the two top seed teams alongside open squad do you feel that's as uh, as big as a surprise or did you feel failure were just kind of on level footing anyway i'm more surprised by the low quality of the memes of these gamers that they are putting into their in-game chat currently um they're only saying something like joe is toxic or something um i don't know if they're trying to meme with this um anyway uh cj sorry i actually thought of something else what what did you say uh I, 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 I forgot. Was it? Do you feel you know Wasp being the higher seed, they just had to win one game in the upper bracket? Do you feel that Fela winning here is a surprise? Um, from like I haven't paid this much attention to the qualifiers, but uh, just judging from this game, if this was the first kind of qualifier game of Wasp that they played, even though I think that if you have like people like Clark and stuff on that team and the general attitude I felt, I'm pretty sure that they screamed a lot before that and stuff. Um, I wouldn't say it's that much of a surprise, actually. I mean, uh, like, to, to be quite fair with you, before that, when I looked at the fixtures, I mean, as, a, as I said to you, like, I'm not following this so much, but I would say, actually, that it was Wasp uh, to win, but um, I think the kind of crucial thing there was just the second round on Badwater, really. Like, you know, uh, CJ, it's like not this this rare with teams that are kind of on par but it can like swing both ways really uh interestingly enough which is sometimes the the way to go okay enough of this uh interesting wordplay um um but yeah like it could swing both ways i wouldn't say it's the biggest surprise i would say it's like uh you kind of open your present and you didn't like expect anything and like you get a pair of wall socks or something like this is so, so much of a surprise <laughs> of this is like it's a slight surprise really yeah slight surprise. i mean there we go we can take a look at the logs quickly from that game i mean it was probably the longest round of bad water we've seen so far today joe getting the most kills 21 getting the most damage as well hitting 464 a minute uh, Menti just behind him though getting 20 kills kaza on 19 so the top three there were all failure players um, Layla dying less than Sprayer. Uh, Spamfest only dying five times. So if your engineer is constantly alive, he was running that Eureka effect, just getting to the next point, and building up a sentry, just making it difficult for Wasp to take any ground. Um, just um, not not really much to uh, kind of see that. I mean, the fact that Clark, Catman, and Morg, all the really defensive classes, are getting the kills for Wasp shows that they were kind of just defending as much as they could. They weren't really kind of getting that aggro and really making that space. So, um, interesting yeah, the read there. Yeah, go on. Yeah, like, it. yeah, like what, what you said, like, they just had, like, I don't know, like, five minutes more of defense. So, up, like, defensive classes are going to be, like, upper on that, on the, on the Wasp side. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And just to take a look, spoilers alert for anyone who uh, wants to watch the other game. Another VOD or an STV from the other semi final. Okay, I'm gonna let me tell you the ropes. Def you can deafen if you want. Give it a, give it twenty seconds. But yes, open squad, who are the, the highest seeds? They be on Her Majesty's Secret Service, aka MI6. So open squad and Failure Esports, the two uh, two teams who ah. Probably not well, expected. Well, like sharing <laughs> the same player bases. Yeah, I mean Open Squad has Five or six of the starting lineup of that Fela Esports team that was runners-up in season fourteen last season. So there will be a uh, there will be a clash of those teams playing against their former brethren and uh, trying to to finish higher than the others. But yes, Fela Esports and Open Squad will be taking two of the three spots. So that makes our uh, six teams. That six team Premiership division so far. We have Lucrosa. We have Budget Tukens, we have Elephant, Open Squad, and Fail Esports. Talking about the teams that lost, though, Wasp, the second highest seed, only had to win today, just the one game. They haven't managed it. They'll be dropping down to the lower bracket. They have to play against Little Team. They lost to MI6 in the first round. Meanwhile, MI6, they will have to play against Tourette's 
chess club or Tourette's French club as they're called these days. I will always call them chess club. But yes, those two te those teams will have to play in the uh, the first round of the losers bracket. Uh, that may be tomorrow. So we'll have to wait and see. Keep an eye on the schedule. Critscast will be tweeting and letting you know about it. We'll have a look at the Discord. Um, yeah, that, that's those, what you get when you want to get, get in Prem. Play each day. You have to play every day. I mean, these teams played on Monday. They have to play today. They may have to. I mean, the losers teams in the losers bracket, they will have to play tomorrow. And if they win, the deadline is on Friday at midnight. So we could have the, uh, the losers bracket final on uh, on friday unless the deadline gets extended so basically um just to reiterate open squad and failure esports qualified for prem after winning the upper bracket semi-finals respectively and the of the remaining teams we have wasp little team on her majesty's secret service and tourette's french club one of those four teams will take the final spot in prem and i think either way Demeto, that's a bit of a surprise because Okay, we've got two really strong teams that have qualified, you know, Open Squad and Fela. Like, they're, they're strong teams. We, we can't argue that. They've got really good players. We talk about the Open Squad having former Fela players. Fela, Joe always manages to throw together a really strong roster. But one of these two giants, one of these, like, French club, Tourette's French club, or Wasp, won't be in Prem next season. So I think that's a bit of a surprise, like, regardless of the opposition. The, the funny thing about this is, um, okay, real real talk now. Um, even though I haven't like paid this much attention to it, I can't picture like chess club any like iteration of chess club ever playing high. I'm sorry. Like if, like I think for like general team kind of cohesion, it would be maybe. I'm not actually sure if Wasp would play high. That's the main issue. Um, I think Wasp is more likely to play high than Chess Club if, like, they get really get, like they. I've been the told qualifiers. Chess Club will will play high. Oh, um, I spoke to Cooney the other day, and he said yes, they they'll probably play a more relaxed season if yeah. they do go and high. So, I'm mean, getting motivated happens, by yeah. uh, by by Kresnik zipping his uh, gamer bottle at 150 decibel the entire time. That's what that's what would mo motivate me to even play high, even if they lose. But that's interesting. Um, Basically means I won't follow this because I can't picture chess club in in high. Um, how have you fallen so low? No, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, I actually think Wasp will take this next thing. Interesting, interesting. Well, we'll be casting these games. Thank you for casting with me, Tomato, and of course, massive thank you to V Hooft in the background, putting all these lovely overlays and these catching those shots, catching those nice air shots. Um, as only a good cameraman can. If you ever see me do camera work, you know that I can't camera for shit. So, V Hooft, thank you very much as always. He will be there at the Copenhagen Games in two weeks, guys. <gasps> two weeks today is when people will start arriving in Denmark. The games will start on the Thursday. We have 6v6, we have Highlander. Highlander is being covered by Chris Cast. Okay, we have uh, we have some quality talent going, including Jay Kawati, Chandos, v -Hoof. We're going to have the whole crew there casting all of the games. We're going to have myself and Tomato. We, we might cast. We'll probably be more uh, content in playing with us. Yeah, I, I'm probably content and like occupied with uh, signing autographs for myself, <laughs> of myself. Um, but... Lots of big teams going, lots of big <laughs> players, lots of big names. So be really good to watch. So keep your eyes out for that in two weeks' time. But before that... Of course, we have uh, just the, the little matter of deciding that final spot in Prem. That will be happening during this week. So keep an eye out for a cast tomorrow and possibly on Friday. And Before of course, on Sunday, we have an EU Prolander. We have an EU Prolander tournament. Sigafoo's 7v7 is being brought to Europe. There is a one-day cup. Uh, I will be casting with uh, some other people. Not sure yet. Maybe Sigafoo himself. Uh, to take a look at 7 versus 7. So if you've never watched that before, might be your chance to see some Europeans take a hand to it. If you've watched the NA version, maybe you can come and watch Europe and see how it's done. But uh, yes, until then, guys, thank you for watching, and we'll <laughs> see you next time. Oh, no, the tomato! Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. Well, first of all, uh, I only wanted to say 7v7, will anyone push there? So, ha, meme. Um, the, the other thing is... Um, I just wanted to, uh, actually, this is the first time I actually want to do shoutouts. Uh, CJ, do you have one so it doesn't seem awkward? I want to shout out to my work because I hate it and it makes me ill and I hate it and uh, I also hate it. So there we go. Shout out to my work for being dumb.
Okay, um, I shout out Scam because it's a very good uh, Norwegian teen show. There we go. Thank you. That's the only thing we're shouting meal, out. You're a literal living meme, Domated. Thank you for watching, everybody. Thank you for enduring myself and a Domato. We'll see you next time. Have a good night.